Hello everyone, good day to all of you. It's me again, Josiah Jen Devon, together with my partner, Miss Trisha DePonter. This time we are going to report and discuss and elaborate about one of the ancient theories in folk literature, that is the allegorical theory. Now, let us officially explore what are the things in the allegorical theory. Let's go! Hello again everyone, so welcome to the discussion proper of our report about the allegorical theory. So I suppose you all are ready, now let's get into it. First, let's have the definition of allegory. So an allegory is a work of art such as a story or painting in which the characters, images, and events acts, act as symbols. So allegory guys is um, somehow present in a work of art, a story, or a painting in which it expresses a an abstract meaning behind it and it could be, the true meaning could be difficult to find because all of us has a different opinion when we look at a certain story, read a certain story, a painting, or an art which the characters, images, and events act as symbols. So the symbolism in an allegory can be interpreted to have a deeper meaning. Yes, the symbolism in allegory could be um, somewhat. Um, the meaning could be more than the than the um, I suppose than the literal meaning of something. An author may use allegory to illustrate a moral or spiritual truth or political or historical situation. So that's it. Um, Authors have their different uh, purposes of um, making a story in which they use allegory to express, um, to show the spiritual truth, a political and historical situation and other, other topics and different occurrences or happenings within our surroundings. Next slide. Now let's have the nature of mythology with the allegorical theory. In the allegorical explanation, all myths contain hidden meanings which the narrative deliberately conceals or encodes. Yes, it is. So, when we see allegorical explanation, um, it is within the um, folk literature that the hidden meanings are being um, deliberately or slowly um, shown or being encoded by the author that not all of us can um, can really um, can really grasp that meaning in a in in a, in, a, in a single um, look looking at it so here is another um, definition of allegory it is a sustained metaphor and the allegorical approach to mythology is favored by the anti-rationalist so allegorical approach are being used usually by the anti-rationalist who are these anti-rationalists? So these are people who interpret the details of myth as symbols of universal truth. And let's have the allegorical nature of myths. So let's you can see a picture about uh, you can see a picture of Max Muller and for Max Muller in the 19th century, myths are to be defined as explanations of meteorological or and cosmological phenomena. Muller's theory is too limited some Greek and for some Greek and Roman myths, but by no means all are concerned with nature. So that's it for Max Muller. He he used to believe that um, myths are defined are defined as explanations of the uh, natural phenomena that's happening within our surrounding. Well, here is another um, description or explanation of Max Muller's idea. So the 19th century Sans Sanskritist Max Muller supported an allegorical theory of myth. He believed that myths began as allegorical description of nature, but gradually came to be interpreted literally. So, for example, a poetic description of the sea as raging was eventually taken literally and the sea was then thought of as a raging god. So that is the same with the, the title um, given to the god of the sea, which is Poseidon, and other gods that has a, um, a specific representation of something that they are being um, recognized as the god of that thing. Now let's have the allegorical interpretation. So allegorical interpretation is 
go beyond the surface meaning of the story. So go beyond. So um, it means that um, allegorical interpretation is um, digging deep into the literal meaning of something. Find the hidden meaning, yes, that's it, which differs from the superficial appearances, yes. Like these gods that they find meaning with their appearances and what they really um, what they really symbolize. So that's the intention of the allegorical interpretation. And it is close to symbolic meaning, yes, it is. So let's have the varieties of allegory. First, the physical allegory. It is first used by Thea Jeans during the late 6th CBC, who interpreted myths in which gods fought each other as illustrating physical or cosmological facts about nature and opposing natural forces. For example, in the Iliad 2454, Apollo attacks Poseidon. Theogenes claims that this illustrates the fundamental physical opposition between the basic principles of fire and water. For Poseidon is the god of the sea and stands for water, while Apollo stands for fire. So in this kind of variety of allegory, it, um, it uh, focuses on the physical appearance of the myths of the characters of different myths, such as um, the opposing elements such as fire and water and, and other characters in there that represent something, a thing or an idea, like Athena, Ares, and Aphrodite. So, the philosoph thus, philosophers could try to read deep through truths about nature or how to live off the surface of old stories. So, that's it. Philo philosophers are trying to read the deep, deep truth in um, using the allegorical theory and how to live off the surface of the old stories. How to, you know, how to, um, um, to connect it into the real world or to in the reality. The second is the historical allegory or the euhemerism. It is used around it was used around the 300 BC. So Euhemer suggested that myths might contain historical truths instead of philosophic philosophical ones. The theogony in, encapsulates the history of certain human kings. So Euhemerus um, he had the idea that myths might contain historical truth so instead of historical philosophical ones like these like the origin of the gods and their fall that um, briefly explains that history that these gods represent the history of certain early human kings so the explanation to this is the gods were originally just great men who came to be worshipped after they died so these myths these myths are created um, because to have a representation of these great men, the, the, the past human kings before that they that have been um, that died and been worshipped by their people. This would explain why the gods behave like an aristocratic family. Yes, the gods are. You do have you even noticed that these gods in myths are like behaving behaving like very powerful they are being recognized as very powerful and have these riches and have uh, the full power to control or reign a, a kingdom or anything and to their people uh, these are the same for the early human kings before oh so that's it guys I'm, I'm so sorry for the background noises that you have heard along the way of our explanation but I hope that you have understood about it. So that's the end of the part one of our report about the allegorical theory. Thank you everyone. Alright now that was the first part of our report about the allegorical theory. Now for the part two let us hear it from Miss Trisha DePontreau. Thank you for listening.